Hello and welcome back to the Unreal Estate Podcast, where the stories we tell are completely unreal, but are totally true. Today we have Cindy Peterson here. Uh, we're going to jump into her background, how she got started in real estate, but most importantly, her wild and crazy experience. <laughs> Full disclaimer, we have not heard this story at all. We like to keep things natural so that our re reactions are general. Um, so Genuine. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, So we just had like a quick summary. My mind is still like, what? <laughs> so y'all, please forgive me. But um, yeah, so let's jump right into it. So how did you get into real estate? Yeah, so um, I got into real estate uh, probably around a year ago now uh, when I moved here from North Carolina. Um, and so I moved here from North Carolina by myself. Um, so it was really just, you know, I booked a one-way ticket, packed two suitcases, and wow. came, came here. I've never been here before. So I will say, like, you know, get come in, move in here from another state and, you know, halfway across the country not knowing anybody. Real estate was hard. You know, mm -hmm. getting into real estate, especially as a realtor, was hard because, you know, you don't know anybody. So right. who are oh, you yeah. going to... Yeah, gonna it's hard when you do right. know people. I mean, it's hard to start real estate when you live in... You already know, lived in the right? same city and your friends and family live there. And for you right? to start, like, from... a entirely new city is crazy yeah because oh. everybody would always say like oh like your parents you yeah. know see right. your parents know yeah and i was like well you know i don't know anybody here so that was definitely always a struggle and i always tell everybody getting into real estate to capitalize on that yeah right? Right. yeah you absolutely know here you have family here use and leverage that and reach out to all the, all the people you went to high school with or went to college with yeah um because I, I just never had that. So Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's amazing that you're here now and you're yeah. successful. And yeah, it's you gonna... even have a story to tell I to come know. on our podcast. I, I mean, know. that means you're doing some business, right? <laughs> it's been, it's been a crazy past couple. I've been in real estate, I think, for, I think, around six months now, full time. Um, oh, the so. other remaining the time was, you know, when I first moved here. Mm -hmm. And then I was working probably on like three jobs. Wow. Oh, and huh. there were some times that I would work like 20 hour shifts. Oh my goodness. So did you come here to like for real estate or is it like you came here, you saw the market and then you decided? Yeah. So I actually came here because I like to be very transparent about this. I grew up with a, in a very comfortable background. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my dad has had a good job and he always supplied me and my family. Uh, me and then our family mm -hmm. um and so i'm always very grateful to, to have that background yeah but yeah. with that background as everybody knows is you're comfortable you're not gonna you're not gonna you can't become successful when you're in a comfortable environment you exactly know? you have that to get uncomfortable yeah sure. you have to you know yeah. be comfortable yeah. with getting uncomfortable and right. it's something i've always kind of had the mindset of mm -hmm. um and then i was like well i want to move out mm -hmm. um i was always given everything and it just mm -hmm. didn't feel Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was like, well, I don't see the point of moving 40 minutes away and paying for all my rent. I was like, I kind of just want to move and take a big leap and see, right. like, prove to myself I can do it, right? Yeah. Because if I yeah. can move halfway across the country, <laughs> half a country by myself with no, right. you know, figure it out, yeah. I can do anything for my mind to. And right. it just kind of shows that you can. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of the reason why I took that jump. Yeah. Um, it was a very big uh, jump yeah. and a very scary jump. But I love that. You're very wise. I mean, yeah. because a lot of people don't see, a lot of people um, don't appreciate their situation enough yeah. to know that they want more, need more and want more for themselves. Right. Um, they just stay in it um, and stay comfortable, especially at like your age, you seem very young. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of young people these days that they're not going to go and do what you've done. And yeah. I mean, you're very wise and I can tell you're a really hard worker. And yeah, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. just thinking that I, I don't know if I would have had I the mean, courage to it's, Especially at this point, <laughs> look, somebody's going to take care of everything. Look, I may oh, just sit wow. back and let them. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? Just kidding. But no, things are, are, like I said, they're working out. So just for the audience. So yeah. you're a realtor. Yes. Hard money lender. Yes. And investor. Yes, and we, I mean, we, me and my team, we also do, we also wholesale as well. Um, so we kind of, we do a little bit of all all, all spheres, which is really nice. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Educational-wise, knowledge-wise, mm -hmm. and we can, we kind of do a little bit of everything. You know, yeah. like sometimes we're a wholesale deal to one of our investors, and then we're right. lend on it, and then we're listed on the back end, and just stuff like that. Kinda Don't like, you just love it? When <laughs> you <can> just <laughs> when it goes. Yes. Right. <laughs> you don't need to go anywhere else. Yes. Except for right. no, I got you. I got you. I know, right? Right. right. And there was times right. even... Um, my boss used to own a construction company, so mm -hmm. there was even times where we could do the rehab as well mm -hmm. wow. you know, as a team. Um, so it was just 
a lot of a lot of a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So was that? I wonder if that was progressive or was it like the thought from the start? So was it like we start off wholesaling and then we got into being a realtor because we saw that we can list and then. Yeah, so I started off getting my license. Um, I got my license because I was work. I moved here and I was working in restaurants, mm. and I was working. I mean, multiple jobs. I, I worked at a lash studio for a while. <laughs> I got pretty lashes. Yeah. <laughs> but I, mean, I worked at a gym for a little bit, um, and then I also like while I was doing all that, I also worked at a restaurant. Um, mm. Sometimes you have multiple restaurants, and coming from that that background, you know, I have really good customer service. Yeah. But I will say it was really, it wasn't, you know, I had this goal. I want to be a millionaire by 25. So it's like, that's my goal. And how how, how was I ever going to get there yeah. working in restaurants? Right. right. Nice. You're not. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of why I had the thought of, I was like, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. And then somebody told me to get my real estate license and then to just try real estate out. And I was like, okay. Gotcha. So I just oh. got my license. And then I didn't like it at first because mm-hmm. I was working, you know, Everybody knows that to be in order to be successful in real estate, you have to put in the time yeah. to yeah. see results. It's yeah. something yeah. that, you know, it's the d- delayed gratification. You're not going to see results right away. Yeah. 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 So it took me a couple of months. And then that's when I finally, I met my boss. And I finally, he was just like, quit all your jobs and come work for me. And I was I like. Another. <laughs> I love it. And then, and then I, this, is, this is what I had no money in savings. And I was kind of, I was thinking Scary. about it. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like, right. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. Um, yeah. I really want to, you know, get out of working on these jobs. And mm-hmm. this is my big jump into learn about wholesale investing. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And I've always wanted to invest in real estate, and mm-hmm. this would be a good opportunity to do so. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, you know, it'll be okay. Yeah, I'm just gonna quit. All, I'm just gonna quit them all. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna go full time in the real estate, and I trusted my boss heavily. Wow. Yeah, and you know, it's given me so many opportunities. Like, he's taught me everything I know about wholesale and the investing side. Mm-hmm. I'm actually gonna. We're going to do our first couple of flips here soon, or for, for me. Um, oh, nice. But because they, they do a bunch of flips themselves, yeah. but they're going to add to it this time. Yeah. So he must have saw that. something in you anyways. I mean, right. because that's, uh, that's a lot to tell someone that's working three jobs to quit everything <laughs> yeah. and come work with me. Like, I would have, like, such a weight on my shoulders for that person. Like, hey, I need to make sure that this person right. is good because I've told them to, like, quit everything that's, like, their yeah. livelihood, if that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, well, you yeah. know, like, it's kind of about, and I, I heard this this morning um, from somebody, was that, you know, somebody could tell you mm-hmm. 100 people to do the same thing, right? Yep. But the only person that's going to be successful is the people that actually take it and use exactly. it and run with it, Exactly. Right? Right. I feel like that's what I did. Every single thing he told me is I just, I absorbed it all and I mm-hmm. put action to it. Exactly. You know? And then, um, which was which was super cool. And, and you know, he's given me so many opportunities. Um, I'm his underwriter for you know their hard money company and i never would have gotten that opportunity unless you know he unless i quit all my jobs full-time right 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 right. and i've you know closed over 30 deals since i went full-time and that's amazing uh september so yeah wow that's amazing yeah Yeah, between like everything yeah yeah Yeah. and that's how we we met you as i didn't know until after the meetup was over so uh, we met you at our media, but and we were just kind of, you know, discussing things and talking about lenders and how things are structured. And yeah. there were a lot of similarities there. It wasn't until after we left and, you know, after the meetup, I kind of go through everybody that I meet and then look at their socials and try to form a relationship from there. Yeah. That's when I found out about all the other <laughs> stuff. I was like, yeah. she's totally undersold this, man. She's out there killing it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all the yeah, events. Because it's not just our event. Like, you're, you're all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Making it happen, building those relationships. Right. And even, I mean, that's what I was going to say. All the jobs you name is all is always people focused, right. if that makes sense. And so. I, I feel like I take a different approach to it because yeah. a lot of people, I especially in the wholesale route, are kind of just, you, you need to go, people go to these networking events, they're just like, I want to meet, I want to get 20 numbers, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or like, I want to get 30 numbers. Yeah. yeah. I go with the goal of, I want to get like two to three yep. numbers yep. of people that you know i have a really good conversation with right now at this point now i'm kind of going to these events and i go like every single time these events are hold, held mm-hmm. most of the time mm-hmm. um and now we're kind of hosting some of our own events so i'm kind of yep. circling out of that but people i'm going and meeting and talking to are the same people i see every single time yeah so it's same like, yep. <laughs> every single on time. The, and then you're and then it, even there's this one networking event um and then the one of the hosts of it mm-hmm. i met him once and i go every single time that they have one mm-hmm. yeah. um, mm-hmm. just to kind of like show my support and just yep. show yep. face and then yeah. now he's you know 
um, asking me more questions to how to how we can work together yeah. and yeah. how we can That's get how it works. Yeah. Like, it's like he never would have done so if you yeah. know, keep showing up for that relationship. Right, you know? right. Yeah. So instead of focus on numbers, you're focused on quality. Yeah. Right. And I feel yeah. like even if yeah. it's just one, you know, if it's mm-hmm. if I leave an argument and have two good quality conversations, yeah. I know like I, I'm going to set a meeting that week with them and yeah. have coffee or go, yeah. go for lunch and you know, have something like that, it's much better than getting 20 numbers and somebody who's not even going to remember who I was. Yep. It, right. Exactly. That's exactly Got our true. context and here we are. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. But like, also, I always tell people, follow everybody on Instagram. Yeah. Because yeah. then, you know, you meet people, it's like, okay, follow me on Instagram and then they keep seeing your face pop yeah. up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was just, and they see your face pop up and they, you know, keep seeing yep. them. Right. Yep. You. Right. Yeah, she's yeah. been on me bad about that because as you can see, <laughs> when you look at my page, like, you you don't see anything. Yeah. Like I post like once a quarter. <laughs> like it's like the worst thing ever. And then when he comes out of blue, like who is this guy? Like yeah, why, and I'm why starting to see posting? that. And I'm just like, like <laughs> all right. I, I will mean. say though, like sometimes, like I I kind of struggle with that too. Is mm-hmm. I sometimes I when I first started in real estate it was more about I want to make sure what I post is quality. Uh huh. Quant- and I feel like yes, quality, yes. but also. When you're posting more, it, it's gonna push your content out more, and then people, more people are gonna exactly. see it. Exactly. And then, like, I've even gone places, and they're just like, "Oh, I've seen you on this mm-hmm. on social mm-hmm. media, or I follow you, yeah. on really? something like that." And it's like, I don't have. And my friend told me this too: is she doesn't have a whole bunch of followers, but she's able to convert her convert her followers really right. well, right? Because she sure. posts a lot, and yeah. She, you know, gets along really good with them. So I think it's all about, you know, how you can relate to the people that you know, and yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty old school, so um, that that's exactly what it's like on my Facebook. Yeah. Um, I Instagram, I am still like, yeah. I'm, I'm a little iffy. I'm, I'm like an old school girl, but my Facebook following, yeah. they're very loyal and yeah. like, um, like your friend. I don't have a ton of friends on there, um, but I have enough that when I post and I want some um some feedback on something, or if I post for um. Like someone, like a yeah. response, I get it. You get it, yeah. yeah. And sure. I mean, that's what you guys are in harmony too. So if you're posting one thing, more people are going to be like, oh, I know them. Or like, exactly. yeah. Yeah. these people to you guys. Yeah. Exactly, so, exactly. One day I'll, I'll get there. I know yeah. it's important, but <laughs> yeah. man, it's just like when you're in the business and you're you're doing like the transaction part, it's like, how do I fit the social media part I in there say, while though, I'm something doing Something that I will recommend if you guys is just posting your closings and like, you yeah, know, and stuff yeah. like that, or like mm-hmm. boosting what you're dealing with when it comes to yeah, harmony, stuff like that. Because I always make make a point to you know post on our our um hard money yeah. Instagram, to get, yeah. like, Facebook, just to kind of get you know who we are out there. Cause, yeah, like, people know who they see. Yeah. Right, right. So it kind of probably just got me in trouble because I um I always go to like a draw inspection and I never record or anything, and then yeah, I get in the car and I'm cool. like. Yeah. Oh man, I forgot. I forgot yeah. to post or it. I forgot to work. Or Facebook Live. Uh-huh. Since you have a bunch of people on yeah. Facebook. Uh, and I used to do that all the time when we first yeah. started um, flipping. But now yeah. that we trans- transitioned to uh, Harmony Lending, I don't know. Like, I don't do as much um, yeah. when it comes to the lending. Now, yeah. my realtor side, yeah. I am. Um, on top all of day. it, I'm yeah. posting Everything. all the time, um, like my realtor content. But when it comes to Harmony Lending, I don't know. We're, we're slacking. We need yeah. to get get yeah. on it. But I'm excited to hear about this story. Yes, so, we are. Oh, we um, are. yes, yes. So this is actually kind of a very interesting story. I heard about it and I was like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I I have these two lovely clients. Um. We actually um. They're you know they're buying a home here this ne- next month. Um. And they're uh, they were about to go under contract, or they were on a contract on this one home. It's in mm-hmm. Galveston or Tiki Island around that area. Okay. So mm-hmm. if you guys look in Galveston, just <laughs> <laughs> don't be try to find it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so they they were about to close that day. So they were about to go on close. Um, and then before they were about to like head over to the to the title company to sign, they got a call from their from you know the their list the listen agent saying, Oh, there's a bunch of cops over there. Mm-hmm. Um so apparently the husband murdered the wife that morning before <laughs> closing because he didn't want to sell the house. What? And I'm and I'm over here, and he was going. So he was going to do like a, a murder and suicide suicide attempt, right? That so after is... he did that, he was, and they needed to sell, right? Because they they need the money. They're gonna get. I think they're gonna get foreclosed on. So they need yes. the money, and um, it was, and then 
she just well they don't need the money anymore yeah, right. yeah. Not. I mean, he, he, he ended up getting caught and then now he's in jail um and yeah so then you know the craziest part is the house is still listed today and that's that part is so crazy to me because i'm so curious to know how will that how all play out work because, i mean if she's no longer with us and he's in jail the house is still listed i mean will it go to closing and yeah. if it does go to closing will he need to sign off <laughs> does it go through probate yeah. I'm see so that's curious. a good question like, with him yeah. being in jail. i actually am not quite sure like since yes. he's in jail that's a good question i mean we've because, done closings with people in jail right but it wasn't because they killed somebody it wasn't yeah. because they killed the other <laughs> see, that, owner yeah. like, <laughs> That is not that is fair. And it's funny though, because like on the listing, it's like it says like seller is motivated, motivated, motivated. I just and don't I'm like understand. I am, <laughs> I'm motivated. They have to right. disclose that. They have to yeah. disclose that. So That's it's like, like so did he kill her in, inside the home? Yes. Wow. Inside. So I so you guys would know this way better than me, right? So yeah. from a realtor's perspective, do you have to disclose that that happened in the house? A murder, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh my God! It's, it's a fine line, but if, if, uh, <laughs> I, I would definitely disclose that. That's for sure. That could definitely I think, come I think back something on you. Like somebody, I feel like all. Uh, well, okay. So a murder, yes. A natural death, you do yeah. not have to disclose it. Uh -huh. A murder, yes, you do have to disclose it. But you know, some people like to. Well, this happened. Dance around like, yeah, it. and this happened, and then after it happened, they like put it up for rent, and it got rented. No way. What? No way. I mean, and now it's five percent. <laughs> I mean, well, if I'm pretty I sure once they found out, he was like, "See ya." Yeah, well, <laughs> well, you know, if you know who done it, it wasn't like a like a robbery gone bad or like someone yeah. that like but broke I mean, in or yeah, something. Yeah. But yeah. still, like I just there I has can't to do be it. Something there, right? I there can't has to do be it. On to like, I I just I, I would want to see this through. Like I want I want to update on it. Like yeah, later. so like you said. <laughs> I, I don't I'm not I don't know if this is insensitive or not, and I'm not trying to be, but you said. It was a murder, and he was going to attempt suicide. Yeah. But, like, what happened? Like, was he, like, the cop showed up? Was he, like, still in the house? Like, how, how the heck did they I even... see, like, that's, that's a good one. I know he didn't get caught, though, so he's in jail, so that's good, right? Wow. But, um, but yeah, no, he just, he couldn't go through with the, with the suicide. I, I have so many more questions. I mean, I, like, did they have kids? Because if they had kids, like... I'm, now sure. You have to... I'm sure it would go down the line, right? Yeah, now... Yeah. now the, yeah, it has the, the, the never the wife's experienced kids and... somebody in jail before. You know, uh, so, we so we have. Oh, really? We've yeah. actually yeah. got signatures from a brother. I can't remember. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, it was, man. It was so two you're brothers. in jail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, so um, it was two brothers that were uh, selling their mom's property. Um, so basically, you know, they were the only two yeah. living um people anyways uh so one brother was in jail one brother obviously was outside of jail um well i didn't pray wrong <laughs> outside of jail. And so the one that was in jail we did have to get uh I, I don't know um what he gave the other brother power of attorney but you still he still had to get that paperwork signed yeah. and he had to go to the library and everything and sign yeah. with someone i don't know the terminology yeah. of the person that he had to sign has with like he had to have a witness Yes, but and a witness and a notary. Because normally, like when you sign things, it's new. Usually, just a notary. Right, right. And he had to have a third party there with him as well. Right. So that's right. how that worked. The prop. The difference is, he wasn't in there for like killing somebody, no. and and it had nothing to do with the house right. at all. Right. It was just like, hey, he's an heir. We need a signature. He was. He didn't like own it. He had ownership, but mm -hmm. at that point, it was kind of like part of the estate. Yeah, what yeah. you're describing is somebody who's who's yeah. owner of this thing now, and the crime that he's in jail for is directly related to, to the house. Yes. So I don't know if that changes things. So that's a good question. Yeah. That's a really wow. Good question. Yeah. I I would think though because I mean just just. Think about the rights that they give people that um, go to prison and stuff. I mean, I mean, even yeah. related to children and stuff. Like, right. um, they still you still have rights to your children when you're in jail. So right. I would think um, yeah. that 
they still it would have to go through the whole probate process. And this is just me assuming. Um, no, no attorney. I have. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. Full disclaimer on that. Right. Um, we're just we're, we're she just dropped this bombshell right on us, and we're just trying to talk through. I would think that <laughs> it would still have to go through the probate process, and he would still have to sign off on it because legally yeah. he's still the owner. Yeah. And that's very unfortunate for the children, especially right. if it's both of their children, to have to yeah. deal with him yeah. with that. Like, yeah, to that's have crazy. to deal with him, and then it's like, okay, you sell it. What happens to the proceeds? Right. And that like, that do you part, still get the that money. Part. After you've yeah. done something like well, that. Well, that's true, though, right? Like, yeah. if he's in jail, would he get the. Yeah, yeah. that's. Um, because I know with the one that we had, uh, basically, A got all the proceeds got handed over to the brother because he had yeah. the power of attorney. Yeah. But he had something signed with him saying like, okay, you're going to hold on to my money for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, see, I have no, I, I'm really that's serious. Right? Yeah. So anybody knows the that's, answer. So I mean, it, but that that's just like, how heavy is life mm. too? Like hey. for you to think that you the better option is to, to do that, kill your wife yeah, and possibly well, yourself, yeah. um, w- because you needed the money like that. Yeah, well, I just think like he didn't want to sell it, but they mm-hmm. needed to sell it, right? And so right. because and like, I guess like I think the wife was you know it was closing day and then he was just like okay, yeah, I'm not gonna sell yeah. It yeah, it's a That's, beautiful house too. Oh like it's such, yeah, a, she it's did such say a gorgeous that house. Foreclosure, so that financial That's strain heavy. may have been heavy enough in his mind yeah. to do something like that. Yeah. So I kind of want to go back to the transaction, right? Because your clients were involved. Yeah. How did they break that to you? Were they like, hey, this happened. Are you still interested? Like, how how, do, how did that work? How did that conversation go? Yeah, I mean, I so like how they, um, <clears throat> kind of was, they kind of, they just, <laughs> <laughs> dropped out just, at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they, they were just like, we, I mean, obviously. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. there were, I think it, when it happened, it was like closing day. And then, so there was, you know, cops around the property mm-hmm. and they were doing their investigations along those yeah. lines. I think that's a big, big enough to. Right. Like, yeah. Right. And so they can get their earnest money back. Wow. Yeah. Were, that's what I was going to ask. So your clients were the buyers. Yeah. Right. That yeah. That's what I was saying. Crazy. Like, crazy. Like after they broke the news, I'm sure they called just like, hey, this happened. What do you guys want to do about it? Like yeah. what? Like, yeah, what? So, and I'm sure yeah. you're just like, you got to take it to your clients. So everything right. that they tell you, you have to take it back. Oh, I'm sure you're going. That's no way. No way. <laughs> no way. No way. Yeah. So, they, so close. Right. Right. So did you guys immediately go back to looking for homes, or did they need a break after that? Like. Yeah, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they ended up finding another house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 So they were, yeah. they were super happy then, but um, but That's yeah. That's wild. So it, like. Final, I'm thinking like final walkthrough, like you guys, that happened, I'm guessing before you guys yeah, even got like, to that it was point. Like, it was like the, you know, it was the like the morning, morning of, morning of. yeah. Morning of. Every, everything was all set and then. Yeah. They were, Thank God you guys nuts. got the news before you went for that final walkthrough. Before you signed. That's right? not <laughs> something that you want to stumble upon. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I didn't even <laughs> think about that. The- yeah. And like, it, I, it was nice because, you know, like the listening agent and that there was like, there was cops everywhere. So the yeah. And he knew wow. she dropped by and was like, oh my gosh. Um, That's traumatic. Oh, oh my God. God. I didn't even think about it. Like, yeah, you guys could have totally, like, if it went undiscovered, you guys there. Supra unlocked the door and boom. That, that would have been, been another so big, traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been done all real. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, such a sad yes. situation. Yeah. But that, that is nuts. Like that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So. no. So that was honestly, I, I was, I was like, I was brains. I was like, I can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't make it up. Look, yeah, you can't make it up. That so. Was, so, and then, um, yeah. So then I'm. Helping the client's um, son right now. Mm, They're gotcha. on a contract for their for their first home. Their, oh, their nice. Their daughter, so yeah, so yeah, like nice. if she could deal with that. Yeah, she could deal with that, man. That's our champion right there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, rock star. <laughs> yeah, so like we we hear these stories, and as you like as we discuss things, we brought up a bunch of questions, mm-hmm. right? And that's the whole point of the stories that we bring up yeah. because there there's always a lesson there, and for the audience that's listening. You, do your due diligence. Is yeah. Right? Yes. That's yes. Know what you're signing. And like for someone else, and maybe another realtor who may find herself in that situation. And we asked a bunch of questions about title and being in jail. How does affidavit of airship work? Yeah. Does he get the proceeds? How does probate work? 
it's like five lessons out of that one right, story right. that I'm sure you're going to follow up on. Right. And we're going to have to follow up on with you, too. Even if we do, like we were talking about, like our side chats, to even follow up with you and say, hey. I have an update on it. It's, it's at the buyers. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, but man, but that is yeah. wild. But, but, yeah, so, no, it, I mean, I feel like the biggest, I mean, I feel like it's real estate, you have so many lessons in real estate. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you're starting a business, yes. so obviously so many lessons, but I feel like the biggest lesson I've ever taken away from real estate in general, mm-hmm. um, and I, I haven't been in there super long compared to everybody else, right? right? But the biggest lesson I took away from it is now is, you know, you have to trust, you know, the people you trust, mm-hmm. you yes. have to make sure you, like, they're going to, you know. Yeah. Be okay, oh, and then they're going right. to take your take your secrets. So not even that, or just be good to work with, because so many people in real estate will do whatever they can mm-hmm. to screw you over and to make money and mm-hmm. just go through the transaction. Mm-hmm. And most people just care about that one transaction. Most people right. realize right. if you lose money now on this one transaction, you can make a million dollars with the same person later down the road. Exactly. Right. That's what I did with my boss. Yeah. 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 Is I was okay with taking a little bit at the first end and then, yeah. you know, to make more over time. Right. And I'm still mm-hmm. going to continue to do so over the right. next, like, couple of years. And right. those lines. So it's yeah. just, you know... And- I'm oh, sorry. No, sorry. Okay. Okay. And I think one of the biggest lessons that um like that's underrated uh right now is the way you handle that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Because we talked about like um all of your jobs and dealing with people and um the way your boss like trusts you to bring you in and everything. Um but and also the fact that now you're helping their son. Yeah. It, I think it was the way that you handle that situation, um, yeah. coming from like something like like being notified of something so traumatic the day of closing like you said a lot of people just worry about that transaction yeah a lot of people would have been like man i was getting paid today right um yeah. and like you know like the whole thing like very insensitive just right. blown out of proportion but i think it was the way you handled it with those buyers yeah. now you have more business yeah, yeah i will true. say like yeah. this you know i will say i i am very transparent with this too i am super young so mm-hmm. some situations that do occur i don't yeah. know how to handle them correctly yeah. and sometimes yeah. I, they sometimes they do happen and then i'm like oh i should never have done that i should never have said yeah. that or you know you know you don't know how to react sometimes and sometimes i'll go back to you know my boss and like how should how would have you handled it how should yeah. i handle it next yeah. time and it's definitely like you know not being super hard on yourself yeah. the first time mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. and then just taking that lesson yeah and make sure you yeah. don't do it again but yeah. for sure and, then- and I, don't, I don't think it's necessary being young i just think uh it's just it's it's, Life is just all you all. It's a part of always you never learning. know. Yeah, right. we're always, right. Right. So yeah. always learning. We make, yeah. we've been in this business for eleven years, and we made a mistake on our last transaction. Yeah, <laughs> and mm-hmm. it it just happens, you know, as you go through these things, just new experiences come. Yeah, you know? yeah, and it's all for a reason, right? I don't think that the situation that you went through, I feel yeah. like you were prepared for it. You sound like a huge risk taker to me. So you being in that yeah. <laughs> uncomfortable situation was probably maybe step by step, like the transaction itself. But I feel like mentally you were totally prepared for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. And I yeah. feel like, you know, that's kind of why I did want to make that big leap to move here and, you know, take yeah. that jump and leap of faith and move here. And then, you know, call my jobs is because that creates a huge mental toughness that you're yeah. not going to need route. Right. And, you, and I, you know, I grew up learning this as well is that, you learn from experience. Yep. Yeah. And my mom would sit yeah. there and tell me, like, oh, don't do this, don't do this, or oh, you shouldn't do this. And I would never listen. Mm. Right. And then I would go through the experience <laughs> and it would happen to her, like, oh, mom, you're so right. I should yeah. never have done that. Yeah. You know, I'll never do that again. But like, you just have to learn through experience. I'm and the I think same just, way. Wow. You know, I feel like that's, I mean, that's for most people, right? Is uh-huh. they, they don't listen. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Especially yeah. to your parents. I'm like, it's, like, I don't, it's I don't almost care. like telling uh, kids. Please go do it instead we're of like. Do it and we're gonna find out the hard way, <laughs> and I feel like that's just life, though. You know, yeah. you find out the hard way, yeah. and you never do yeah. it again. Wow! That's, wow! So <laughs> your st- your story matches your ambition and your drive, man. I wouldn't expect anything less from you, just based on seeing you know you out and meeting people and the business that you're doing, how many transactions you're posting. Like I, I wouldn't believe that you were so young in this business with the amount of business that you're doing. Yeah. Great job, and so we talked about like yeah. social media. How can people find you? Like they're interested in building a relationship with you, and hey, maybe doing some business, some transaction, or maybe they're looking for a hard money lender. You know, we're hard money. There's enough yeah. business. 
we're, we're always willing to share our platform. So how can people find you? Yeah, so we, uh, I'm everywhere. I mean, our, our Harmony company, we're on YouTube, we're on TikTok, yeah. <laughs> we're on Facebook, <laughs> we're on Instagram. But uh, our Instagram is Legacy Preferred London. And then we also have a website. So if anybody wants to come onto our website, my phone number is on all of it. So gotcha. you can always give me a call. Um, but my personal Instagram is Sydney, S-Y-D-N-E-Y, A Peterson. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, I post, I make a goal to post two stories a day. Mm. Um, if it's just, you know, if awesome. it's what I'm doing throughout the day, mm-hmm. if it's just me or, you know, you know, or I'm having a women's event tomorrow. So it's just about, you know, if I, I'm posting that, nice. um, yeah. just making sure people can like see, cause with social media, you need a personal side to it, right? Right. Yeah. You know, people like to engage and mm-hmm. see that personal side of you. Yeah. So yeah. I always like to, you know, add stuff on my stories and everything along those lines. Yeah. And then we, I always, you know, talk about our closings on our legacy Instagram. So nice. That's awesome. Either yes. one of those work. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. That's it for this one. My <laughs> God. <laughs> we will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>